Welcome back to the Life in the Spirit seminar presented to you by CCRC Toronto. Today, we're going to talk about God's gift. Last week, we spoke about new life. God is so good. In Him, we have redemption. We are no longer slaves, but we are free. And we're called sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father, a King. And you know, as a King, He is lavishing us with His gifts. That as sons and daughters, we are about to hear what God has in store for me and you. Dear brothers and sisters, this talk will be presented to us by Deacon John. Just before we begin with Deacon John, I just want to sh remind you that next week we will be having a live session on our Facebook and YouTube channel. Please join us at 7.30 p.m. On, on next Monday. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. It is indeed a great honor and privilege to be with you during the Life in the Spirit seminar and to be able to speak to you about preparing to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and receiving God's gift. Before commencing, let's start with a wonderful prayer to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy Spirit, and thy shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that in the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, if we uh, want to live the Christian life in a powerful way, we must first open up to all the power of the Holy Spirit into our lives. One of the ways the Holy Spirit gives us the power is through his gifts. And I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that the Holy Spirit given to us in baptism and sealed of confirmation is indeed real. His gifts understood and yielded to can change our lives radically. And God did not leave us orphaned. No, not at all. He assured us that he would send us his spirit. This is promised to us in scripture. Listen to what Jesus tells us in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he abides with you, and will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and in you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This gift of a deep, abiding, personal relationship with God is possible for each one of us. The seed is given at baptism and lays the foundation, all the grace to grow in wisdom, age, and grace is bestowed on each of us at our baptism. And when the cleansing waters of baptism watched over you, something very real indeed happened. The sin inherited from Adam and Eve was removed from you, and the blood of Christ on the cross was the payment for your redemption. You were washed clean, and you were given the first pledge of eternal inheritance 
the Holy Spirit. This is reaffirmed in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, by putting his seal on us and giving us his spirit in our hearts as a first installment. You became a temple of the Holy Spirit. And this is also reaffirmed in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? This really happened. It is not just pious imagery, no, but we must be willing to cooperate. And once we reach the age of reason, to choose more and more to conform our lives to him. I ask you, are you cooperating with the grace given you by the Holy Spirit? Can you pro proclaim with St. Paul as in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I know in the flesh and I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We, we must be willing to enter into that relationship on his terms, not ours. No. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, Jesus says, And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Now, the sacramental and spiritual gifts that are listed in Isaiah and 1 Corinthians are meant to be ours, such as wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, the fear of God, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, discernment, discerning spirits, prophesying and healing, wonderful and beautiful gifts that we receive. Just as we were not meant to be alone, we are not meant to keep what we have and have been given and will receive for others. Any of the gifts that we have received from God are ultimately for us, but to help us serve others. Not to serve others is like having a toolbox full of tools that you never use. These tools were given to us for a purpose, and that purpose is simple, to serve. Jesus made this purpose clear to us. And consider what the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 26 to 28 says. Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, even as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That is another good question to ask. What service should I do? The answer to this question will vary, of course, from person to person and the gifts that they receive, but there are some things we all need to be engaged in. Our primary service we all need to be part of, is believing in the Lord Jesus. Sounds simple, right? Of course. But consider what Jesus says in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 2 to 29. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him, who he has sent. Now, believing in the one God doesn't usually come to mind when we think of doing the works of God. But let's not forget that believing is our most fundamental work. And out of the reality of believing, we are called to be witnesses. Acts chapter 1, 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, the normal outcome of receiving God's power is to witness to his glory. Often, when we read scriptures, we have a tendency to interpret them as referring to foreign missions. No, not at all. However, note that the first place mentioned for the disciples to witness is in Jerusalem, their own backyard. We don't have to go far to find a mission field. No, no matter what we and where we go or what we do, there's always people within easy reach of us who need to experience the goodness of God. It is said that you may be the only Bible that some people will ever read. There may be many people in your life that will never be part of the church or receive any of the sacraments or even read scriptures. Their only experience of what a holy life is may be through seeing you as the witness. Thus, the most common witness we give, and perhaps the most important one, is the way we live. In the words attributed to a saint dear to my heart, St. Francis of Assisi, and I quote, preach the gospel always, use words when necessary. Now, of course, we will fail at times, but even the way we handle our problems can be a witness to others who are experiencing problems, in many instances, the same problems. We will find occasions when we need to witness with our words, and at that time, a holy life that people can see will make our words more believable. Now, for many of us, the thought of witnessing in this direct way is daunting. My advice to you is keep it simple. A witness is merely one who testifies to what he or she knows to be true. Even though witnessing is a service, when you share your faith with another person, you will receive more than you give. It is my belief that God is asking again through the repeated calls of St. John the 23rd, St. Paul the 6th, St. John Paul the 2nd, Pope Benedict, and now Pope Francis to say yes to the call of being a witness, discipleship, and to renewing our ascent to the life of a disciple. Now, the price of discipleship, though, is giving up our will to do things our way, our way for our own satisfaction. It is giving up the right to tell God what we want and when we want it. It is giving up even the right that comes with free will to tell God how we are going to be his disciple. So how do we become more his disciples so that we can be good stewards of the graces he has given you and I? We need more of the Holy Spirit. And this coming week, you will be making preparations for a greater release of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Remember, God desires to have you experience the full power of of his love for you with all the gifts that flow from his spirit of love. Now, as you prepare to receive this gift, you need to resolve that you will turn away from sinful habits and patterns in your life or anything that would block the actions of the Holy Spirit. If fears or doubts tempt you, to run away from a deeper life in the Spirit, know that such temptation is normal. It was normal for me also. Do not give up to them. But with the help of Jesus, continue surrendering every area of your life into his hands. 
If there are any areas in your life that are not right with the Lord, now is the time to ask for forgiveness of him. If possible, and I know it's during the pandemic, if possible, go to confession this week. If there are past memories that keep you from advancing in love of God, ask for prayers of inner healing. God desires to give you a new life in his spirit. And we should attempt to remove any obstacles that keep us from life, from flowing into your whole being. Tomorrow, being Tuesday, reflect that we cannot earn God's gifts. No, they are given to us freely. Nor do we deserve God's favors. There is nothing, nothing we can do for God or anyone else that would make us deserving of them. St. Paul tells us, God has saved us and has called us into a holy life. Not because of any merit of our, but according to his own design. The grace held out to us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior. On Wednesday, let's pray for a genuine desire of wanting a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit into your hearts to be renewed, to be regenerated in our Christian faith. We have to desire it with all our being. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, it says, To anyone who thirsts, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of life-giving water. On Thursday, let's pray that our hearts may be disposed to receive in a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We must make up our mind that we will turn away from sinful habits. Now, the basic sin of mankind, I hope we all know, is impiety. What is impiety? It is walking past God as if he was not there in our presence. We make ourselves the potter and God becomes our clay. We create our own rules and we expect God to comply. St. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24, you must lay aside your former way of life and old self, which deteriorates through illusion and desire and acquire a fresh spiritual way of thinking. You must put on that new man created in God's image, whose justice and holiness are born of truth. On Friday, we must renounce false gods and rituals. Now, have we ever been involved in any facet of the New Age movement, such as channeling or consulting a channeler or reading their material with a view of embracing New Age practices? Have you ever sought out fortune tellers? took horoscopes seriously, took part in witchcraft rituals, yoga, which involved mantras, played with Ouija boards, and games such as Dungeons and Dragons. To this scripture warns us, let there not be found among you a fortune teller, soothsayer, charmer, or caster of spells, nor one who consults ghosts and spirits or seeks oracles from the dead. Anyone who does such things is an abomination to the Lord. On Saturday, we must renounce anything that is compatible with living a Christian life, such as long-standing anger unforgiveness, 
jealousy, envy, especially towards family members that unfortunately, and I hear too often, people take to their graves. These, my brothers and sisters, are the blocks to that life-giving grace of the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to read and reflect on Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 40, 41, which says, Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts as well as our hands to go in heaven. On Sunday, we should reflect on that we can be confident in our Lord who is rich in mercy and who does not withhold his love for you and I. St. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 to 39, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. On Monday, the day that you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit, Let's seek the grace of the Holy Spirit with faith. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 9 to 13, our Lord states, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For anyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. If there is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. My brothers and sisters, I leave you with this. Next Monday evening, you will be prayed over to receive a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life. And I would like to end this session by reciting a prayer of commitment and I ask you to repeat along with me, which next week you will pray formally. And when you do, please let it truly come from your heart. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, I surrender to you today with all my heart and soul. From now on, I want to belong to you, totally and completely. I want to be freed in every way from the power and rule of Satan. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God that you died on the cross to free me from my sins and that you rose again to bring me new life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I ask you to help me turn away from all wrongdoing and I ask your forgiveness for all the sins I have committed. Lord, I give my life to you. I open wide the doors of my heart, and I ask you to fill me with your presence. I ask you to baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Baptize me in the fire of your love. 
Amen. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain in the peace of Christ. Come Holy Spirit and fill us with your love, your peace, and your identity. I've been strong and I've been broken within a moment. I've been faithful and I've been reckless at every bend. I've held everything together and watched the shatter. I've stood tall and I have crumbled in the same breath. I have wrestled and I have trembled towards the end. Chased my heart or drifted, drifted home again. Under blessing till I've been desperate to find redemption And every time I turn around, Lord, you're still
God is so good. You know, He loves you so much as our Heavenly Father. He just wants to pour out more and more and more. That these gifts are freely given and we don't have to earn it because He has already redeemed us, dear brothers and sisters. As Deacon John shared beautifully how we could prepare for next week, I encourage you to go to confession. I encourage you to look internally and ask the Lord to shine His light in the areas and surrender. For He's so good, He wants to give you a new life in Him. Brothers and sisters, continue to recommit yourself to Him, for He loves you so much, and have an open heart to Him. For He is, for He is a God of, God of His Word. He is the God that is so faithful. So dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you to keep watching this video as in preparation for next week and remind you again that Monday, February 22nd, 7.30 p.m., please join us live on our YouTube and Facebook channel. Until then, may God be with you. May His peace surround you. God bless.